Big rocks like this are a bit of a clue as to what we're looking for tonight. come out to this what is an old burial mound so in, originally it would have an earth mound over it and these rocks would be the structure of the tomb inside they're actually called dolmen they're neolithic and I think I'm probably wrong but they're probably about five or ten thousand years old so I'm gonna get some photographs of this um, the moon is up at the moment, but it's due to set at about 11 o'clock, so I've got a few hours to kill before then. Uh, just play around with some light painting and stuff like that, so let's get set up and crack some shots off. scary with that overhanging my head. Um, one of the things I wanted to discuss or one of the things that's occurred to me is you see lots of YouTube videos called uh, photography in low light and shooting in low light. Um, I think that's a bit misleading. I don't think there should be anything such as low light photography. If you can get the exposure you need then it's not low light photography so for me being interested in astrophotography some people would consider that to be extreme low light whereas a wedding photographer might consider shooting inside a church hall to be low light or shooting at a reception party in the evening to be low light a macro photographer might consider shooting mushrooms in a forest to be low light but I don't, well, maybe it's a bit controversial. My own personal feeling is if you've got a lens that is capable of gathering as much light as possible, for example, f1.8, 1.4, 1.2, something like that, and they're sharp, it's sharp at those apertures, and you can get the exposure you want, then there shouldn't be a problem with low light photography. It's, it's a very individual thing and uh, it's up to you how far you're happy to push the ISO to get the settings you want to get the image you need. In astrophotography um, it might not appear like you need to freeze any motion but the stars move. For me if I'm using a 20mm lens the longest exposure I can do is about 13 or 15 seconds before the stars start to trail and that really isn't any different to perhaps freezing the vital moment in a wedding ceremony where you might be using a really fast shutter speed. It's still about gathering the amount of light you need to correctly expose the image. Anyway, that's enough of me talking rubbish. Let's crack on with some photography. Right, let's show you what I've done so far. I've put some lights up here. I've got a little blue light up there. If we go round here, we've got a little purple light there. And then tucked down in there, I've got my little orange light. So let's go and take a photograph. Right, so we're all ready to go. Focused on infinity, self timers on. So let's go. Right, I'm gonna turn my head torch off. I'm gonna walk to the left of the thing, turn my 
torch on and just give it a quick like that a bit of light painting and see what exposure we've got there so one thing i've been trying to do you can't probably see it on the screen here is to get the moon coming through this gap here it's a bit tricky to line up but i think we've managed it so let's take that shot you fell over then right self timer on Ooh. And five seconds, go. Turn my head torch off. Job done. I've just found a composition you won't be able to see them but there's some trees on the horizon with the Big Dipper behind it so I'm going to take a shot here and I'm also going to use my Nissi star soft filter to see if I can bring out any more of the stars in the Big Dipper so let's go I think what I'm going to do while I wait for the moon to set is leg it over to a different location. Hopefully there should be able to shoot towards Orion. So let's go. Right, I am obviously at a completely different location now. I did go to Stonehenge on my way back from the first location, but by the time I got there the moon had gone down. Orion was in not an ideal place in the sky to get the composition I wanted and it clouded over there a little bit so I gave that a miss and came back to this location so we'll get a few shots here with any luck. I do shoot at this old church quite a lot I really love it here and it's not very far from my home. This uh, church isn't as old as where we were earlier this is only about a thousand years old So what I've done is I've stuffed a light in this bush tree thing here. In the entrance to the church I've put my little orange light around there. And then over here at the base of this bush I've got my little purple light. And then obviously we've got that big cross up there lighting things up which is a bit much at times. So one of the things I had wanted to capture up here was the Milky Way but it's still a little bit too early in the year. I think in another, month, in another month's time the Milky Way should be, well I know that you can get a perfect arch above the church early in the morning about 4am just before the sun rises so we'll try that at some point but uh, checking on photo pills the milky way is still a little bit low in the sky what little bit there is there is in a light polluted area because believe it or not we're 60 miles from london here but you can still get the light pollution from london and this very faint part of the milky way and it's actually in that light pollution at the moment so don't think that'll work. I'll try a different composition just to see if we can pick any of it up anyway. So let's have a go. Well, I tried a shot to see if I'd capture the Milky Way, but like I thought, it's barely in the sky, it's on the horizon, I think, in the light polluted area. So I've got one good shot of this old church. Time to uh, pack up, go home, and get some sleep. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you soon. Bye.